Let me just first start by saying I do believe that there is a need for a human rights commission in our region. Uh, people who feel they are victims of discrimination should have a readily available place to have their claims heard. Um, I actually think that Arlene Lee and in her interview with the spy a couple of weeks ago just made a very compelling case for why we need this outlet and, and why this is an important thing. Having said that, let me say I have some serious reservations uh, about how this proposed commission is being set up in Chester. Very simply stated, um, I believe this commission should reside with Kent County and not with the town of Chesterton. And here's why. Number one, there are roughly 3,000 black citizens in Kent County, and only 1,000 of them live in Chesterton. So creating the commission at the town level will not serve the interests of the blacks living elsewhere in the county. Many of the discrimination claims that are likely to come before uh, this kind of a commission would inevitably pertain to the schools and public safety. Those functions are largely run by the county, not the town. And so positioning this commission at the county level would allow uh, that commission to intervene directly with agencies that are part of the county government. And in, in summary, the county just has more resources to support the work of a commission like this. So why not update and restart the county commission to reflect the realities of 2020 and things have changed, but why have Chestertown start its own commission from a standing start? And so I'm a little concerned about the privacy aspect of the commission's work and how that privacy will be maintained. Um, I. I also share some of Andy's concerns regarding scope. Um, there are some things that, it, that are really best addressed at the county level and some things best addressed at the town level. When I think about town scope, I think about things like diversity and supplier sourcing or making sure that, um, that our employees at the town level reflect that of the diversity of the community. And so my primary feedback would be that the scope of the commission as it's currently proposed seems very broad. When we think about our size, it may need to be narrowed just a little bit to, um, to reflect the impact that it can actually have, again, because so many of these areas lie at the county level. Interesting, the points that have been raised by the three of you. I think if you go back and look at the text of the ordinance itself, you'll see that those are addressed in different ways. Uh, first of all, as to the rules and regulations and how things are going to actually run, that's addressed. It says that the commission may adopt such rules and regulations as it deems necessary and desirable for the regulation and conduct of its meetings and activities. So the points that are raised about um, taking complaints, and privacy, those are all going to be discussed when, when this thing gets started. And they're going to, they're going to, those things will be set up. And these are going to be public meetings. So again, the very valid privacy concerns that have been mentioned um, by Jen, Jen and uh, Andy Dodder, those will be, those, those can be addressed and will be addressed as this goes forward. Also, I think if you look at the, um, the areas of authorities and responsibilities, you'll see that, um, while this group has teeth, it is not a, a, a body that is supposed to be adjudicating anything unless the parties want them to adjudicate. You'll see it in particular at, um, at, at uh, point D, it's, it, it's empowered to accept complaints relating to discrimination and refer the complaints to appropriate authorities. So this group is, is, is going to be kind of a clearinghouse for these kind of things. You see also as uh, he says it can act as a mediator if the party so desire, if the party so desire, or refer to a local mediation group. This is not this is this is not um, uh, this is not supposed to be a group that's adjudicating anything unless the parties say, "Could you help me talk about this?" And there's nothing in this in this that suggests that that if Jen is just asked. Uh, whether or not monetary fines could be could be leveled against it. There's no suggestion that that, that that could happen. If that's the case, I'm going to read this 
into the record. This is a, a letter that I received from Nancy Mugel. Nancy Mugel is the head of Kent School. She did write this as the head of school. So it says, Dear Mayor Serino, as a leader of a nonprofit business in Chestertown, I'm concerned about the proposed Human Rights Commission purely from a business perspective. While I agree that substantive discussions on race, gender, and sexual orientation need to continue to happen in our community, in our state, and in our country, this commission does not appear to be the answer to me. In the Chestertown spy on October 13th, Arlene Lee stated that the HRC is, quote, a solutions-based commission whose primary mission is to mediate discrimination issues, may be racial, sexual orientation, gender, or other protected rights, unquote. For issues of discrimination and or grievances in businesses, there are already many agencies whose work is focused in this area, specifically the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the NAACP, the ACLU, the Discrimination Law Association, specific unions and professional associations, and legal representation. In my view, it should not be the role of the town of Chestertown to monitor, manage, oversee, mediate, or make recommendations regarding employment law and its businesses. I believe this is an overreach. A letter from Arlene Lee on 10-5 um, asking to be part of the record, Okay. similarly to the other one. So, dear mayor and council, I write to support the creation of a Chestertown Human Rights Commission as an independent body empowered to assist those who have complaints of discrimination in Chestertown. These commissions have existed throughout Maryland for decades. A quick review of annual reports by commissions at the municipal and county level shows that the vast majority of claims are resolved by mediation, training, or counseling. The benefits to the community are enormous. As people learn where and how to address concerns and businesses and agencies become more aware of policies or conduct conduct that may be driving customers away. This, more than anything else that has been proposed or discussed, will make the words of the mural have meaning. It will demonstrate that Chestertown is truly uniting against racism as well as other forms of discrimination. To vote against it will undoubtedly cause the community to feel that the words are hollow. I urge you to support the Human Rights Commission ordinance as written using the successful language of the commission in Annapolis that has existed and worked well for over 40 years.